Okay, so now we're going to talk about some of the tools that we use while we're grooming. So, um, as you can see, it's um, I find it kind of hard to um, you know evaluate the shape of the fur when it's sort of this, it's so jagged and stuff, and it's basically has to do with there's no anti-aliasing. So what I usually do is just turn on anti-aliasing like that, and it halves the size of the document. So you have to go up to document and double it. Yes, and then it sort of bakes the pixel. So you have to hit Control N for clearing the screen and just redraw that character. And um, there we go. I think you have a way much better representation of the fur and how it's going to look. Although this slows down your system, and you can see while I'm sort of rotating this model around that. It's kind of slow, so you have to decide for yourself: is it worth it? Is it not? Do you have a, yeah, problem with it? Anyway, so we're gonna talk about. Um, also, when I was rendering, I felt that the shadow was kind of too hard. I think it should be um, uh, should be a lower intensity shadow, just to also it's easier to evaluate the uh, fur. I mean, it's really black, so uh, you can go up to here, global shadow strength in the red render settings. Just lower that to maybe 0.5, something like that. And also, now that you have anti-aliasing on, you can lower your sub-pixel quality to zero. Try the render. Oh, that's really... <laughs> Not enough shadow, maybe. Yeah, that's better. I ended up with um, 0 0.68 there, so um, that's good for me. Okay, and also now I think it's time to um, put the uh, painty on back. Yeah, and I want to just, you know, pick a color from the uh, skin, sorry, the body. Solo mode is on now. I set it to F3, so just hit uh, C and you can see in the color swatch down here that you're, you are um, just sampling a color on the skin. Go back to fiber mesh, hit F3 to show everything. And then we're gonna flood the entire fiber mesh. You go up to color and fill object. I have set a hotkey to control F, which I think you should do too. Control Alt, click, control F. And now we had set that. Control F, just flood the entire thing and you could see that there was not much going on there. And the reason why is you have to hold down control, turn on RGB and crank that up. There we go. Oh, that's kind of, that's very red. <laughs> Just going to sample the color over here. Um, lower the RGB. And please note that I'm holding down the control uh, button right now. Yeah, something like that. And I think it's good to have a, just a general color that um, sort of has the same um, color and value as the body itself. So we won't notice the, the transition between skin and, and hair so much. Mm, yeah, just going to try a render real quick. Yeah, that's fine for now. Okay, let's um, hit Shift F, Polyframe. And now you can see, uh, you remember that we polygrouped the body and here we can see the results. The fiber mesh has the exact same um, polygroup as the polygon which from the body which they are um, growing from. So 
this makes it really easy to just isolate and work with just some of the hair on the body. Like what I did now was just holding down control shift and clicking on a part of the fur. And I, while I'm doing this, I can hit control, click outside uh, to mask it. Then just control shift, click outside to show everything. And then I just invert the mask by holding down control and clicking. There we go. So now if I want to work just on the fur on the ear, I can just um, do that. Turn off polyframe and uh, choose a brush of some sort. And you know, you can see here. And also if you're annoyed with uh, the different values in the fur, you can just hide the, um, the visibility of the mask. You go down to masking and view mask. I have also set a hotkey for this. I think it might be the default, but I don't remember. Control Alt, hit that and then control H, control H. So now it's still masked, but we can't see the mask. And I think it's really handy. Um, there is also, you also have the ability to use, um, um, let's do it like that. Oh, brush down here. And you go down to auto masking. Oh, here we are. We have something called mask by polygroups. And basically what it does is that uh, if you crank that up to a hundred and I start grooming like this, uh, the brush will sample, okay, which polygroup am I at? And then it will only work on that uh, polygroup. But what happens if you, you know, you want to start with the ear and you just happen to be over here, then you start dragging on the, uh, facial fur or the fur on the head. So uh, it depends. I find it's, um, I get much more control with, with this kind of workflow, just masking off, inverting and hiding the mask. Um, so, but you can do whatever you like. Just going to turn down mask by polygroup once more. Um, oh, this can be here. Okay, the general brushes that I start working with is called um, uh, <laughs> I usually don't go this way. I really, really recommend that you learn the shortcuts for your brushes. And I mean, I know it's hard. You can't remember remember all the all the <laughs> shortcuts for these brushes, but you can remember um, four per session. And basically, I mean, if you forget, you just check it, you hit B for showing the brushes. And then I know it's a groom brush. So I hit the letter G. And then I get all the groom brushes, all the brushes starting with the G. And, and then you can see every one of these brushes has a, uh, a letter or a number assigned to it. So Let's say uh, groom brush one. The shortcut for that would be B G one, and also uh, groom hair long would be B G. Oh, sorry, B G, and um, there it is, groom hair long, and the letter is I, so it would be B G I. That's just two B G one B G I, just. You know, shifting from brush to brush, it's really, really, do it. It just improves your workflow and speed. Um, so these two brushes, uh, those are the ones I usually start up with. So if we check out, <laughs> whoops, BG1, Groom Brush 1, um, yeah, just usually it has alpha, I turned it off earlier. Yeah, you get this... Um, yeah, it's a good, just general broom, grooming brush. That is nice. But the thing is, 
it's not really that nice when you come to the edge of the model. I will show you what it does. Just gonna uh, store a morph target first so we can go back uh, down here. So yeah, here it works nice. But what what happens when we come to the edge? Sort of um, I just don't feel I got that kind of control. It's sort of it really uh, makes sure that the the fibers go along the body all the time. And I mean, maybe I don't want that. Maybe I want them to just go out like this. Yeah, I'm I'm sort of feeling I don't get the result <laughs> I wanted to show you, but um it's a good brush. Um but I really prefer broom brush no sorry, groom hair long BGI uh for just the start of the grooming. And you can see that it sort of ignores um that the edge that it that it comes to the edge it doesn't try to slick the um, fibers to the body also one more thing um down in the brush menu here and just if you don't have it right here you can just hit brush and drag this little icon over here go down to um Fiber mesh. You got something that is called front collision tolerance, and uh, what it does is just going to try and show you. Let's say that this this is the surface of the mesh, the body, and if you have a high front collision tolerance, you will have a sort of this result when grooming and if you have a low front collision tolerance you will have this sort of results so basically um, it's a fantastic tool it it makes sure that you don't get an intersection between your um, your mesh behind the fur so in other um, 3D applications, when you are working with fur, it's really easy to just, oh, you know, the fur goes through the body, which is uh, impossible in the <laughs> real world. And here you don't get that, uh, really, which is nice. You might get it uh, in the ears from the... Um, um, but that's because of the initial settings. Once we start grooming, we will lose that behavior. Also, if you change the front collision variations, it's sort of, um, if you imagine the, um, the mesh here as sort of a force field, um, the distance of the force field from the original mesh will sort of vary. So will you, you will have a natural um, variation in the in the fibers, how far out they go. Like if you have very low value, it would more go like, you know, like this. They will all sort of be, they will look uh, alike much more. So that concludes the sort of the uh, tools in this video. And in the next video, we will start grooming, finally.